In this section, or in this video, we're going to be talking about 6.3, simplifying the square root of a whole number less than 100. Now, your calculator will simplify square roots less than 100. Um, they'll even, oops, they'll even simplify other numbers. However, they will not simplify very large numbers. So I think after you get over a thousand, what happens is, is that the calculator will only give you the decimal version of the response and not the exact value of the response. Um, but for a small number like 28, it will give you the exact response, okay? The problem is, is that you may in your future encounter the square root of a number greater than a thousand, okay? And they will still want the exact answer, which means we need to start practicing now. How is the calculator taking the square root of 28 and coming up with two square root of seven? Because if we learn that process with the smaller numbers, and then we get to numbers that are bigger than 100, we can continue that process. And then that way, when you get to numbers that are over 1,000, you can still continue that process and um, you're not at a loss on how to get the exact answer of say something like the square root of 2,888, okay? So we wanna be able to learn this from the beginning so that way when we do get to extremely large numbers, we can still um, find that exact answer that they're going to need. So what is happening here is that the square root of 28 is not a perfect square, right? There, no, there doesn't exist a number such that um, that number squared will equal 28. But I do know that four squared is 16, five squared is 25, and then six squared is um, 36. And of course you have the earlier ones like three squared is nine and two squared is four and one squared is one, right? Um, it jumps right over from 25 to 36. So there's no perfect square for 28. But what can happen is that you may be able to write 28 as a product of two numbers where one of them may be a perfect square and then maybe the other not. Okay? And the way you do it is you take the largest perfect square that will divide evenly into this. Now I know it has to be something smaller than five because five times five gives me 25 and that's already really close to 28. So it would have to be either four squared, three squared, two squared, or one squared. So between those four values, the only one that will divide evenly into 28, 16 will not go into 28 evenly. Nine will not go into 28 evenly. However, four will go into 28 evenly. And so you can write 28 as the product of four and another number. And what would that other number be? It would be seven, right? Four times seven is 28. And then because four and seven are both real numbers, we can apply that property and separate the square root. So now that we have a product of two square roots. Remember, this splitting can only occur if both of those numbers are real numbers. So then now that we have this, um, the square root of four is two, and I still have the square root of seven, which is not going to simplify. And so then if you wanna clean that up, you don't really need the dot. The response is just two square root of seven, which is exactly what we had found in the calculator. So you can use the calculator to verify these problems, um, but when it comes to showing your steps, you do need to show where that two is coming from, okay? Similarly for 80, we need to keep going. Now I know that the square root of nine is 81, so it's probably gonna be a number less than nine. So if we go through all of our numbers, three squared is nine, four squared is 16, five squared is 25, and normally if you have these handy on a note sheet, for like during the test, um, it would help just so you don't have to rewrite these every single time. Um, but I wanna find the largest one that will go into 80 evenly. So I don't think 36 will go into 80. Let's see, 80 divided by 36. No, it does not go in evenly. Let's see 16. I know 25, well, I don't know. 
No, 25 won't. Nope, we got a decimal again. Let's see, 80 divided by 16. Yes, so this is the largest perfect square that goes into 80. And since I got five, I know that 80 will break up into um, 16, it's perfect square. And just for cleanliness, I guess, or formality purposes, go ahead and put the perfect square first and then whatever you got um, next. So that when you separate them, the perfect square will come out and it, you'll already have that number in the front. Whereas if you put the 16 in the back, then it's gonna be over here and then these are gonna be swapped. And formally, they always like the coefficients in the front and then the square roots next. And so that would be the response there. But at least we have a process. We're trying to split it up into a product of the greatest perfect square times something else, okay? And then you can split the square root and then take the square root of the perfect square part and then you'll get that answer. And so we'll extend this idea to bigger numbers in the future.